This video shows how to use Lynx, a local development platform, to build, publish, and host an API. Lynx consists of a visual designer, which you can see here, and a server that you'll see later in the video. The application we build in the designer will be deployed to the server, which is responsible for hosting and managing the application. We start by creating a solution. The Solution Explorer is where we see all the processes, types, and services that we create. The Properties panel shows the properties of any object you select in the designer. The Central Canvas is where we build the functionality for the processes, and the Plugins is where we add functionality to links. These functions and types are used in this central panel. The open API definition of the API we are going to build looks like this. It consists of one single path called customer, two operations, add customer and get customers, and the component is also called customer. It's very simple. It's got an ID and a name and an email. To implement this API, we need a host for the REST endpoint and a way to assist and retrieve the data. In this case, we'll save the data as a SQL database. To do this with links, we add the database and the REST plugins. Database. And REST. So we can start by adding the REST host to our solution. If we look at the REST host properties, there are two that's required. API definition, where we'll paste in our own API definition. Let's do that now. And as you can see, Lynx creates the operations for us. The second one is the base URI. In this case, I'm going to add a setting because this would probably change when we deploy this to a public server. And while I'm here, I'm going to add the database connection string as well. Now we're going to add or implement the add customer functionality. We need to insert the customer data received into the database and return the customer with its ID. To do this, we drag the execute SQL function, supply connection string from the settings, and open the SQL editor to build the insert statements. Under Objects, I can just right-click on my customer and generate an insert. We can remove the ID because that's auto-generated. And now we can add the values that's coming from the request that the API received. In the body, there's the name and the email. Finally, we need to do a select because we need to return the full customer with the new ID. By default, an execute SQL will loop through all the rows it returns. In this case, I know I'm just going to use the first one. The next step is to set the response. So I'm going to use a set value. My target is the response 200, and my source is the data I'm getting from my SQL statement. Now I can debug this.
In the debugger, this input data represents the data that I'm getting back from the request to the API. I don't need to supply an ID. There we go. We can see the execute SQL return the new ID and on the output, that same data is sitting in our response. So we know that that worked. The next step is to implement get customers. Follow the exact same path. We do an execute SQL, select the connection string, do the SQL. In this case, it's a bit simpler, just the select. Set the return to return the whole list. And then set the data to the response. Once again, we can debug it. There you go. Now that we're finished implementing our API, I'm going to save the solution as customers and I'm going to deploy it to my local server. So I set it to server, deploy. If you browse within server, we can see the customer's application starting up. Once it has started the first time, we need to start the services it contains. In this case, we have the single REST host service that we start. Link server now hosts our customer's API and we can track the calls through these events. Add customer and get customers. To see it in action, I'll open another browser tab and call the get customers operation. We can see the item created when we implemented the solution. I'll also open Postman to add to do the post. The body looks like that. And return the result. And if we refresh this, get the extra one. And when we go back to link server, we can see the extra calls on the metrics dashboard. We had a single call to add server using Postman and we've had two gets. That's it. We've built, deployed, and hosted an API with two operations in well under 10 minutes using links.